This video is intended to be used in conjunction with the written instructions that came with your product, SNC Instruction Sheet 665510. You can download this instruction sheet at snc.com. Pad mounted gear contains high voltage. Failure to observe the precautions below will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from company operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, users should follow their company's operating procedures and rules. SNC's PME pad mounted gear brings in air insulation, in air switching, and quick, convenient fuse handling to elbow connected gear. This video will demonstrate how to operate the gear. We will demonstrate in a controlled area for ease of filming. There are many different configurations of PME pad mounted gear. We will demonstrate on a PME 9, which has two compartments on one side of the gear containing mini rupter switches and two compartments on the other side of the gear containing fuses. To open the doors of either compartment, first remove the padlock from the doors insert a pentahead socket wrench or tool into the latching mechanism. Rotate the wrench or tool 60 degrees counterclockwise to unlatch the doors. Notice, do not apply any undue force when attempting to open the doors. The use of undue force may damage the latching mechanism. Disengage the left door latching mechanism by turning the latch clockwise. Then open each door fully and latch the door holders. On double door models, the adjacent door should be closed and latched to minimize exposure. The mini rupter switch is a three pole 600 amp switch used to switch between power sources and can be operated outside the enclosure. The operating shaft used to control the switch is located on the same side of the enclosure with respect to the switch location. To open or close the switch, remove the padlock and open the switch operating shaft access cover. Then, remove the folding switch operating handle from its storage pocket behind the access cover. Unfold the handle and slide it onto the hex switch operating shaft. Note the switch position indicator, which rests against a stop in either the open or closed position. Arrows indicate switch open or switch closed position. Rotate the handle in the appropriate direction to open or close the switch and check the switch position indicator to verify that the switch is in the desired position. You can now confirm the open close position of the mini rupter by observing the blades. A viewing window is provided in the switch termination compartment to allow positive visual verification of switch blade position. Here they are in the closed and open positions. Remove and fold the switch operating handle and return it to its storage position. Then close and padlock the access cover. Warning, do not leave the switch operating shaft access cover unlocked if the gear is left unattended by qualified persons. Always confirm the open close position of the mini rupter switch by visually observing the position of the switch blades. SNC Manual PME Pad Mounted Gear is equipped with a unique transfuser mounting, a fuse handling mechanism that is interlocked with the load brake elbow. Danger. The following procedures presuppose that the user has supplied and installed load brake inserts and load brake elbows. If dead brake inserts and dead brake elbows are installed, or if company operating procedures and rules do not permit switching with elbows, open the mini rupter switches before proceeding. Failure to open the switches when dead brake inserts and elbows are used will result in a flashover and serious injury. To access the fuses, first, open the enclosure doors. Then, using a shotgun stick, install a portable feed-through or standoff insulator on the parking stand that is directly above the cable guide of the elbow to be moved. This will ensure that once the elbow is moved, the cable will not interfere with the transfuser mounting. Then, using the shotgun stick and following the elbow manufacturer's instructions for load brake operation, remove the 200 ampere load brake elbow, thus interrupting any load through the fuse to be removed, and move the elbow to the portable feed-through or standoff insulator. Danger. When changing fuses, 
The 200 ampere interface need not be covered since it will be exposed only temporarily. If company operating procedures and rules require it, the interface may be covered with an insulating protective cap without a drain wire. A cap with a drain wire must not be used. Operation of the transfuser mechanism will draw the grounded drain wire inside the component compartment close to energized parts, which can result in a flashover and serious injury. If elbows are stored on feed-through or standoff insulators for an extended period of time, cover the 200 ampere interface with an insulating protective cap with a drain wire and connect the drain wire to the ground bail. Failure to connect the drain wire to the ground bail can result in a flashover, injury, and equipment damage. The insulated protective cap and drain wire must be removed before operating the transfuser mechanism. Failure to remove the cap and drain wire will interfere with operation of the mechanism. Once the elbow has been moved and mounted on a feed-through or standoff insulator, the transfuser mechanism may be operated. Using the shotgun stick, raise the mechanical interlock to unlock the transfuser mounting. This interlock, which cannot be lifted to the unlocked position until the elbow has been removed, guards against gaining access to the fuse while it is carrying current. Secure the shotgun stick to the pull ring at the lower end of the transfuser mounting. Be sure not to ratchet the shotgun stick too tight when securing the pull ring, as it may hinder the movement of the transfuser mounting. With an outward pull, rotate the transfuser mounting end for end to expose the fuse. Make certain that the mounting is latched before removing the shotgun stick. Then disengage the shotgun stick from the pull ring. Using the shotgun stick, push against the top of the mounting to verify that it has securely latched. With the transfuser mounting latched in the open position, the fuse is de-energized, isolated from high voltage, and accessible for removal from the mounting. Do not close a door on a transfuser mounting in the open position with the fuse in the mounting. The door will strike the fuse pull ring, which will interfere with door closing. The door may be closed if the fuse is removed from the mounting. The fuse can now be safely removed from the transfuser mounting. SNC manual PME pad mounted gear is furnished with transfuser mountings that accommodate SNC type SME20 power fuses, SNC type SME4Z power fuses, or SNC fault fighter electronic power fuses. Fault fighter electronic power fuse mountings also accommodate a variety of current limiting fuses. See the written instructions for information on assembling the fuse and fault fighter electronic power fuses. Secure a shotgun stick tightly to the fuse pull ring with a fuse oriented so that its body is below the stick. Grasp the shotgun stick with both hands approximately two feet apart, placing one hand on the shotgun stick latch mechanism. Lift the fuse and lower it into the cradle of the fuse mounting. With the fuse securely seated in the cradle, push the fuse forward to latch it in the closed position. Then, disengage the shotgun stick from the fuse. Verify that the fuse is properly latched in the fuse mounting. While holding the shotgun stick, push against the fuse holder assembly and also pull on the fuse assembly by locating the ring of the stick in the opening below the pull ring. After the fuse has been installed or replaced, close the transfuser mounting as follows. Secure a shotgun stick to the pull ring at the top of the transfuser mounting. With an outward pull, rotate the transfuser mounting end for end to return the fuse to the component compartment. Make certain that the mounting latches in this position before removing the shotgun stick. Then disengage the shotgun stick from the pull ring. To verify that it is securely latched, push against the bottom of the mounting with the shotgun stick. Then, lower the mechanical interlock to lock the transfuser mounting. If a protective cap was placed on the bushing interface, remove it with the shotgun stick. Then, still using the shotgun stick, move the elbow from the portable feed-through or standoff insulator to the bushing in accordance with the elbow manufacturer's instructions. Remove the portable feed-through or standoff insulator from the parking stand. Close and latch the enclosure doors. Pull outward on the pentalatch mechanism cover to verify that the door has latched securely, 
then padlock the door. We hope you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please visit our website at snc.com.